Okay, I got Sheldon. What's the number? 553, hurry, please, hurry. 553, five, Sheldon. Okay, can you tell me what's going on there? Call looked interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to kill her. Uh, you can see it. It looks like a little dining room or something in there. It's empty. Imagine frantically dialing the police while cowering somewhere in your home, having just witnessed the horrific murder of your aunt by her deranged boyfriend. The police arrive, but all they do is knock and patrol the perimeter of your house for any signs of trouble before they depart. Their lack of thorough investigation leaves you helplessly exposed, ultimately marking you as the next target. Tragically, this nightmare was a reality for Kiona Griffin, a vibrant, beloved, and fearless young woman. Her life was brutally cut short when her aunt's unemployed, quarrelsome, and dangerous boyfriend, Jay, later identified as, Darrell Demon Brown, shot her four times, including a fatal shot to the face. In a chilling twist of fate, the police's failure to act with urgency allowed Brown, a now-identified killer, to vanish without a trace, gaining a crucial three-hour head start. His disappearance left a community shaken and a family devastated by a preventable tragedy. Welcome to the American Crime Femicide channel. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for future uploads. In the quiet neighborhood of Grand Rapids, Michigan, at 553 Sheldon Avenue SE, a house became the center of a harrowing tale of deceit, violence, and murder. Keona Griffin, a vibrant and outspoken young woman, lived there along with four other family members, her grandmother, Jacqueline Baber Bay, her aunt, Sherletta Baber Bay, and a man known only as Jay, who had recently moved in after starting a relationship with Sherletta in 2017. The relationship between Sherletta and Jay was shrouded in mystery. And some people say he was a little strange, he was a little different, you know, but they said that about my sister too. She was quiet, you know, she wasn't a social person. So just because you're quiet and you're a little different than everyone else doesn't mean that you're a murderer. It was unclear whether the family was aware of Jay's true identity as Darrell Demon Brown or his criminal past. Before living with them, Brown had served time in jail. If the family had known, they might have uncovered his history of brutalizing women. In 2005, court documents revealed that Brown had viciously assaulted his then-girlfriend. He had bound her with cords, kicked her in the face, gagged her, urinated on her, and doused her with lighter fluid while her children, one of whom was Brown's own child, slept upstairs. The woman managed to escape the following morning by boarding her daughter's school bus and pleading with the driver to leave immediately. Despite reporting the incident to the Grand Rapids Police Department, she expressed in court that she didn't want Brown to get in trouble because she still loved him and believed he wouldn't receive the help he needed in prison. The case, which initially involved felony kidnapping charges, ended with Brown pleading guilty to a misdemeanor domestic violence charge. Fast forward to 2019, after his release, Brown began dating Sherletta and moved into the family home. The family found him to be quiet and shy, similar to Sherletta. The only issue they had with him at the time was his lack of employment. Kiona, ever forthright, insisted that Brown needed to find a job if he wanted to continue living there, not realizing that her insistence might provoke his deep-seated resentment towards women who challenged him. They weren't fans of each other, and I think she wasn't a fan because, like I said, he wasn't working, and he probably wasn't a fan because he was like, oh, she's exposing me for who I really am. This simmering tension reached a boiling point on March 13, 2019. That morning, with Jacqueline at work and only the three remaining housemates at home, tragedy struck. Kiona, sensing imminent danger, made a whispered call for help to the police. Wednesday, March 13, 2019. 10, 29, and 25 seconds. Nine one one emergency. 
Hello? Okay, where are you located? I'm sorry, ma'am, I can't hear you. Are you able to tell me where you're located? No. Are you at a... Okay, I got Sheldon. What's the number? 553, five, hurry, please, hurry. 553, five, Sheldon. Okay, can you tell me what's going on there? You just hurry up, please. I'm going to die. You're trying to kill me. You already killed my name. You need to hurry up, please. Okay, ma'am, I'll start the police that way. Can you tell me what your name is? Kiana. Who's the person who's causing trouble there? Okay, I've got a call entered, so we're going to get the police started that way, all right? Can you tell me what room of the house you're in? Seven minutes and 41 seconds after her call disconnected, three police officers arrived at the residence. This call looked interesting. Trying to kill her. It sounds like she could be ninety six, too, you know. Uh, you can see it. it looks like a little dining room or something in there. It's empty. This just goes around. There's nothing in the back here. Looks like there's a fence on the other side. I heard Russ put in for that background so spot. I. Just two people. Yep. Who was the other person? She's
these were consensual right now, right? I say you want to join the fun? That's a very happy looking dog. Go make friends with it. It is. This just goes around. There's nothing on the back here. Looks like there's a fence on the other side, but. They departed only three minutes and 42 seconds later, having failed to make contact with anyone inside. Two hours and 18 minutes after their departure, a second, frantic 911 call was made by Sanford Cummings III, Kiona's brother. Nine one one emergency. My sister not moving. What's the address? Five fifty three seven. There's blood everywhere. My sister is not moving. Okay, stand on my. You said shirt. Five fifty three Sheldon. Sheldon Southeast. It's a yellow house. Please hurry up. Five fifty three Sheldon Avenue Southeast. So correct. Yes, please. Means that she's not breathing. I don't know. I don't. She's not moving. I'm holding her head, please. Okay. Alrighty. All righty. Stand in line with me. I do have fire and police on the way. Stand in line with me. We're gonna connect over to medical. Okay. Please. And you said that there's blood everywhere? There's blood everywhere. Okay. Did she cut herself or try to commit suicide? I don't know. <laughs> She's doing her job and she's patient. My I'm okay. I'm okay. Grand Rapids here. I pre-alerted already for 553 Sheldon Avenue Southeast.
Southeast. Yes. Pre-alert already for a female there, not breathing. Caller says she sees a lot of blood. All right. Caller? Oh, Ma'am? Oh, my Lord. Ma'am, I have help on the way. I have a few questions. Tell me. Is she back here? Come on, is she back here? Oh my God. Ma'am, I need to know what's going on there. Tell me what's going on. I'm not a ma'am or her brother. I don't know. She's naked. I used to stop over here before I go to work to my granny house, and her friend was over here outside. We came in, and I, I didn't even come upstairs. Her friend did, and she hid naked, blood everywhere. Please. Okay. Kiana! All right. Oh, How old is she? She's 20. She born in 94. Okay. 94. She's about 29. All right. I need she to. She's not moving, Ma'am, they're on the way. I need to ask you is oh, she breathing? Ma'am, is she breathing? I'm not a ma'am. No, I'm a, her brother. Okay. She, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Please come home. They're on their oh way there. No Med one. Med one on Nine one on. Okay. Well, you can stay on. I'm sorry. What was oh that? Oh my God. Stay on. Okay. Where is she bleeding from? I don't know. It just looks like somebody stabbed her. Right here. Yeah, somebody stabbed her or something. She's been stabbed. Yes, it's okay. blood everywhere. My little sister is naked. Please come home. Okay, sir, they're on the way, okay? All right. Is she breathing? No, I don't know. I don't know how to tell. She's not moving. I'm yelling her name. She's not moving. Okay. Please. All right, they're on the way there. I need you to tell me now every time she takes a breath in. I need to know if she's breathing. Oh, no, she's not moving. It's like she's, she's not breathing. everywhere. Like she's just breathing for a long time. Okay. All right, we're going to stage on this one as well. Okay. Please, come on. The police returned to the scene to discover a horrifying sight. Kiona and her aunt Sherletta had been murdered. Sherletta was found in her bedroom, shot in the back of the head as she lay watching her iPad, the earbuds still in her ears. You get they another call yeah. and the to the officers. same house. And the same and you officers come here come and now back. you gotta bring my family out in body bags because you didn't care at 10 o'clock. In the days following the gruesome murders, detectives feverishly scoured 553 Sheldon for evidence and canvassed the area for surveillance footage. Multiple cameras captured Brown's movements that fateful afternoon, tracing a path that led detectives a mile north of the crime scene. Among the stops he made post-murder was the Grand Rapids Children's Museum on Sheldon at Fulton Street. Surveillance cameras inside the museum caught Brown entering at 3.24 p.m. and leaving 12 minutes later. He had approached the front desk claiming to know someone inside, but museum staff quickly made it clear he could not wander the premises unsupervised. Approximately 20 minutes after leaving the museum, another business's surveillance camera spotted Brown walking near Leonard Street and Turner Avenue. It was later discovered that one of Brown's former girlfriends had dropped him off in that neighborhood. From there, Brown, a man adept at living off the grid and avoiding digital footprints, vanished without a trace. Known for his survival skills and lack of ties to the community, he had no job, no social media presence, and minimal connections, Tracking him down proved to be a significant challenge for law enforcement. The loss experienced by the family was compounded one year later when a fire ravaged the home at 553 Sheldon, the same address where the murders occurred. Tragically, firefighters discovered the bodies of Jacqueline Baber Bay and her grandson, Emerion Cummings, in a second-floor bedroom, both victims of smoke inhalation. They had tried to escape but were ultimately overwhelmed. This second catastrophe within such a short time has left the family grappling with an immense loss, their lives irrevocably altered by the actions of a man still at large. As they navigate this profound grief, there remains a collective hope for justice. Someone knows something, because he had to have help. It's not if he gets caught, but when he gets caught. He can't run forever. You know, every day in my purse I carry Kiana's high school diploma. Because, um, that's like her last and greatest accomplishment. There'll be no grandkids, you know.
A $25,000 reward stands for any information leading to the capture of Darrell Demon Brown, who remains a significant threat to public safety. May Kiona Griffin and her aunt Sherletta Baber Bay rest in peace.